At the start of the movie, we see a FedEx package being delivered to a man. The package has a sticker of angel wings on it, and the receiver of the package says that it's from his wife, while he is already with some other woman. Moving on, our main character Chuck works as a systems analyst executive at FedEx. Chuck takes his job really seriously. He travels around the world and currently he is in Russia to optimize the hub's productivity. And to do so, he sent a parcel to himself from Memphis, America to Nikola, Russia at someone's house. A kid from that house carrying that FedEx package runs towards the FedEx hub and hands over the package to Chuck, who then opens the package which contains a clock. It started at absolute zero, and by the time it reached its destination, the clock was at 87 hours, 22 minutes, and 17 seconds. And as per Chuck's standards, 87 hours for a parcel to reach its owners is not acceptable. Now as we have to figure out, Chuck Noland is a man of strict schedules and deadlines. It means a lot for him to get the packages delivered to their owners on time. But in the midst of all the chaos in his personal life, he has managed to keep a long-term relationship with his girlfriend Kelly. Chuck calls Kelly from Russia to let her know that he'll be back home in Memphis in around 18 hours. Chuck then arrives in the US and meets up with Kelly. They are as loving a couple could be. The couple then head to the Grand Nolan family Christmas dinner, where Chuck's brother brings up the subject of marriage between the two. But both of them laugh it off and avoid answering the question. Chuck realizes that he needs a dentist appointment as he's having a toothache while eating. Then suddenly he checks his pager while Kelly is looking at him. They both look at each other and Kelly knows what's going on. Chuck needs to leave for work again considering that it's the holidays. And given how committed Chuck is to his work, he plans to go. Kelly accepts this and tries to compromise by asking him to be home before New Year's Eve, which Chuck agrees to. At the airport, Kelly gives Chuck an old watch, a family heirloom as a Christmas present. Chuck gets touched by Kelly's gift and before leaving, he hands her a little box which she believes to be a ring. Chuck then tells her that they'll open it together on New Year's Eve when he returns and goes to catch his flight. Chuck then flies alongside four flight crew members to Malaysia. A few hours into the flight, they run into a storm. Chuck hears the pilots talking about losing all radio coverage and after that, something in the plane explodes which leads to heavy turbulence in the flight. The plane starts to lose control and one of the pilots, while trying to get Chuck to his seat, hits his head pretty badly. Chuck sees the ocean getting closer and the plane crashes into the Pacific Ocean. The plane gets filled with water and soon Chuck starts to drown. He uses the emergency inflatable life raft given to him by one of the pilots. With the help of that raft, Chuck manages to get himself afloat. But the weather is bad and strong ocean waves start to hit him. It's a situation of life or death for Chuck. Luckily, Chuck survives and finds himself ashore on an uninhabited island. The emergency raft had barely managed to take Chuck on that island. Chuck gets out of the raft and sees that the watch is still with him. He also finds a few FedEx packages which had been washed ashore. He picks up the packages and finds himself all alone, with no other island visible for miles ahead. He draws a help sign on the ground to get the attention of any passing planes. He looks at the clock given to him by Kelly and his first day on that island ends. Next day, he finds a few more packages. He finds coconuts on the island with which he quenches his thirst. He goes on to explore the island and finds a cave. He then climbs on top of the island to get a better view of everything. From above, he sees something in the water and quickly goes down to see what it is. But to his surprise, it's the dead body of the pilot who tried to save him. Chuck digs a burial place and places the dead body of the pilot inside it. He gives a resting place for the person who tried to save him. And soon, his second day also ends, with him going nowhere out of that island. At night, he keeps looking at the picture of Kelly inside the watch she gave him. On the third night, he sees a ship far away from the island. He calls out for help, but he is too far away for his voice to reach the ship. He flashes the small torchlight at the ship, but it is also of no help. To save his life, Chuck packs his things and rides the damaged raft in hopes of reaching the ship. But the tides are way too strong, and he gets thrown into the water. His leg gets cut on a coral reef, and he screams out in pain. Defeated, Chuck goes back to the island, and it starts to rain heavily. To shelter himself from the rain, he enters the cave which he discovered a couple of days back. Inside the cave, Chuck finds a small water stream, and starts to drink water from it. Exhausted by the day, Chuck falls asleep, and the small torch also loses its power. Next day, he opens the packages in hopes of finding anything useful. In one of the packages, he finds a volleyball. He also finds a pair of skating boots and a dress. With the help of the boot, he can now cut coconuts easily, and he uses the dress to catch small fishes. He opens all the packages, except for one package which has a sticker of angel wings on it. 
Chuck keeps the package unopened to keep it as motivation for him to stay alive and deliver the package to its rightful owner. He finally fixes himself a small tent and tries to light fire. He tries for hours and hours but gets no success. He ends up getting a cut on his hands, which finally breaks him. He throws everything in his sight and shouts to the top of his lungs. Few minutes later, he finds his blood-stained handprint on the volleyball. Chuck makes a face on the volleyball and sets it in front of him to make it look like he wasn't alone. He starts to talk to the ball, and after a while, he finally manages to light a fire. Chuck gets happy and starts to dance around the fire. He finally had something to be positive about. He cooks a crab on the fire and eats it, all while talking to the ball. He names the ball Wilson, as it was manufactured by Wilson's company. Next day, he gets severe pain in his teeth. He uses the skating boot and a rock to get his teeth out, but loses consciousness in the process. It's been four years since he has been stuck on this island. Chuck isn't the same as he looked four years back. His hair and beards have grown massively and Wilson has also changed a lot. In the time he has spent on that island, Wilson has become an important part of his life, which has in a way kept him going. One day when he's sleeping in his cave, he hears a noise and when he goes out to check, he finds a broken piece of a plastic door and brings it with him. Chuck looks at the broken piece of plastic door, thinking about what to do with it. Finally, Chuck gets an idea of what he can use it for. Chuck has created a monthly chart to calculate the time. They're currently in February and Chuck tells Wilson that they are getting out of there in April, when the sea waves will be in their favour. Chuck plans to get out of the island in two months. Chuck starts to prepare a wooden raft to get out from there. He also makes ropes out of tree skins and uses those ropes to tie the woods together. When he is out of those ropes, he uses the cassette reels to tie those woods, but he still needs some more rope. He goes on top of the island to get more rope for the raft. The time has finally come. Chuck writes a message on a rock before boarding his ship with Wilson. He starts to row the raft to save itself from the strong waves. He fights with the waves and manages to keep the raft afloat. Chuck thinks that he has overcome all of the problems. He is happy and he spends more days on that raft in hopes it will sail him back to his home. But he doesn't know that more problems are coming his way. He doesn't have a drink of water and he doesn't have food to eat. So he drinks the rainwater collected in his raft and he starts to catch fish to eat. Then one night, it starts to rain heavily and Chuck holds on to the raft for his dear life. When the storm clears, the raft is in very bad shape and Chuck cannot find Wilson. He cries out for the ball which has been his only friend for over four years. Chuck starts to panic and then he finally sees Wilson floating a little far away from the raft. He jumps into the water to save Wilson. He reaches out with his one hand to get to Wilson, with his other hand trying to keep a hold of the raft. He desperately tries, but he just cannot reach Wilson. In the end, Chuck loses hope of getting him back and cries out in pain of losing the only friend he had in the four years he spent on that island. Wilson is lost and the raft is broken. There seems to be no hope for Chuck. Chuck gets sick and cannot even move. A whale sprays water on him and we see a ship passing behind him. Chuck finally opens his eyes and turns back to see a huge cargo ship passing by. After all the troubles and misfortunes he suffered, Chuck finally gets saved. Four weeks later, Chuck is flying to go back to his home and meet his family and Kelly. His friend tells him that everyone had thought he was dead, and so they held a funeral for him. After landing, he gets to meet a person who he doesn't seem to recognize. The person then introduces himself as Kelly's husband. He tries to explain that Kelly was too emotional and confused to see him. Chuck stays there silent without knowing what to say or do. The love of his life, who he kept in thought while surviving on that island for more than four years, had married someone else. His friends and family hold a party in celebration of his survival. After everyone leaves, Chuck looks at a lobster which makes him think of the crabs he ate while on that island. He also looks at a lighter which reminds him how important fire was to him. Chuck can't even sleep on his bed. He lays on the ground, staring at the same watch which Kelly had given him years back. Even though she had married someone else, Chuck needed closure. So he takes a taxi to Kelly's house. Just as Chuck is about to ring the doorbell, Kelly opens the door and invites him inside. Chuck wants to say something but Kelly immediately hugs him. Chuck hands her the watch she gave him as a present, and Kelly is shocked to see that he still had it. Since it's a family heirloom, Chuck wants Kelly to keep her watch. Kelly then shows him that she had kept his car after he had gone missing. She hands him the car keys and Chuck gets inside the car. The two of them share a kiss, but Kelly pulls herself back. Chuck starts to drive away, and Kelly realizes she still has more to say. She calls out to Chuck and starts running towards him. Chuck also gets out of his car, and they kiss each other. Kelly says that after four years of him being lost, she had to let him go, but she always loved him and will always continue to do so. 
Chuck says that he too loves her, but he knows that it's too late for them to get back together. Kelly also cannot leave her family behind, so they find it best for them to leave each other. At the end of the movie, we see him driving. He is going to deliver all the packages he opened on the island. He stops at a house and fails to find anyone. So, he leaves a package at the door with the message, this package saved my life. Thank you, Chuck Nyland. While driving back, Chuck stops to take a look at the map. He is thinking about where to go next. Then, a woman stops her car and asks if she can help him. Chuck asks where the road ahead of him leads to. The woman answers his question and then goes back to her car. When she drives away, Chuck notices the same angel wings on the back of her truck, which was on the package he didn't open on that island. The package which saved his life by giving him motivation to stay alive belonged to the woman he just met. And, she might be single if you remember what her husband was up to at the start of the movie.